Good morning and welcome to part two of my series where I built my dream music production studio from scratch. Um, I'm super excited. The weather is a little bit cloudy in Bangkok today, but the view is still amazing. I cannot get enough of this amazing view of my new condo. Anyways, the best news of today, the wall is finally fixed. The wall is fixed and now I could proceed um, building my studio. However, I didn't receive all the absorbers yet. So I'm still waiting for them and with that said I want to show you what we have planned and tell you about my speaker choices and on top I might buy an analog synthesizer today so let's go. So when it comes to building a music studio you realize pretty quickly that it's not that easy and you have to think about a lot. After diving into this whole universe of YouTube tutorials and articles, I decided to search for someone who is more experienced than me that will help me to make the best out of my situation. Luckily, I found a guy here in Thailand who is really professional and knows exactly what he is doing. He agreed to help me building the studio, so I'm super grateful for that. And now with no further ado, let's jump into the concept that we have for my studio. There we go. So my room is not ideal and it's actually pretty small. The long wall is about 3 meter 40 long and the shorter wall is around 2 meter 80 and it's about 2 meter 70 high. On top, I cannot place the desk and speakers facing the shorter wall, which you actually should do. Because if I would do that, I couldn't enter either the balcony anymore or I couldn't enter the room anymore. So. I have to face the longer wall, but it's okay. I think we still found a pretty decent solution um, for my situation. So let's get into the room. On the two corners behind the speakers, we decided to place in total four bass traps, which are pressure bass trap. That means they have a wood plate between the front of the absorbers and the fabric, and they start to swing or vibrate when they get hit by a certain pressure by the speakers. And that's really good to get the bass frequencies under control. However, building them is super complex. I would recommend you only doing this when you experience. Otherwise, I think normal absorbers are the better solution because you can mess this up pretty bad. On both sides, we have in total four normal absorbers. They are about 15 centimeter thick with a gap between the absorber and the wall from also 15 centimeters. And the reason for that um, it's simple, you can increase the effectiveness of the absorbers by having an air gap between absorbers and wall. Behind the speakers, the plan is to put one absorber. The reason for that is um, it's likely that there is not much more space after. When you consider you have to put the speakers on big stands, so it's going to be difficult to place more absorbers at the front wall. However, on the back side wall, we have in total four absorbers. So we have two more normal absorbers of 15 centimeters thickness and on the corners we have two absorbers 30 centimeter thick and they are also pressure absorbers meaning they also react like the base straps yeah to get the base under control because especially in a small room like that base gonna be the biggest problem or the biggest issue you will face. Yeah, so that's the main concept of that room. Um, we also think about placing something on the ceiling but I'm still waiting for the feedback of the owner if it's okay to drill some holes inside of it. So let's see if I can do it or not. Let's talk about speakers. So in the past I had a small Channelac 8020s, which are lovely speakers. However, due to their small woofer, they cannot really put out that much of bass. And building a new studio meant for me also that I want to be able to have a bigger woofer so I have more punch and that I can feel more the music I produce and the music I listen to. And therefore I decided to go with a six inch speaker, which is I think the most you can put in a small room like I have. I think a bigger one would be simply overkill. And after a lot of research, I decided to go for the actually brand new Vocal Alpha 65. I read many reviews about other speakers in their price range, especially the KRKs, and I couldn't actually decide which speakers to choose. I also thought about the Channelac 8030s, which are 5 inch woofers, but they are still quite more pricey, so they were actually over my budget, anyways. So I went to a store here in Bangkok 
Luckily, they had both speakers, so the KRKs and the vocals in the same small studio room where I could listen to them for a while. For me, I felt that the alphas had more emotions. It was more pleasing to listen to them. Even if the KRK, I would say, had a better transient, uh, especially in the low end. But it was not that big of a deal. And on top, they were a little bit cheaper, so I went for the vocals. I can't wait to show you them in action when I make my final studio tour. And now I think it's time to go to the city and buy my first analog synthesizer. I have arrived at the mall, but I just realized I went to the wrong mall. Um, I have to go to Central World and up to um, Para, um, Siam Paragon. So I decided to walk back. It's maybe around 500 meters, so it's not too bad. So let's have a quick walk to the mall and then go to the shop where I can test my perhaps new analog synthesizer. So this is Central World, um, it's arguably one of the biggest malls here in Bangkok and um, it's not my favorite, I prefer other malls more, but they have literally everything here, it's crazy. So the mall is pretty big and now we have to find the store, I think it's on level 5, um, but I think we have to go this way first. <laughs> just realized. I went one floor too high, <laughs> I need to go one down again. Ah. That's the thing I don't like about this mall, it's like a maze, like a big maze. You never find anything. <laughs> Last time I spent about 20 minutes to find the Starbucks. Um, yeah, here's some garden furniture, I'm getting closer. Found it. Music concepts over here. Let's go inside. And this is the Pewdie, the Cork Mini Ado XT. Beautiful thing. So the best part of it is you can connect it with your um, VST plugins, for example, Omnisphere or Diva, and then you can use it as a MIDI controller. And on top, it's also generate amazing sounds on its own because it's a nice analog poly um, polyson. So yeah. Really excited for that and the price is really fair. So. so this store is super helpful and super friendly. They're helping me right now to find the perfect stand for it. So maybe we're gonna take the stands. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope this works. Yeah. But that's way too high. Like when, when I would stand, I would be okay, right? Yeah. But I sit mainly. Okay, we found a solution for the stand problem. We take this one here. This is actually for directors of the concert. But the size is perfect, but maybe I have to stabilize it afterwards a little bit. Alright, we made it back home. Buying something in the city in Bangkok is always a hustle. It takes so long with all the traffic and all the distances. But well, that's the price of living in one of the most exciting cities in the world. So here it is. The Mini Alook XD. Super excited to show you and explain you everything about it, but this will not be in this video. So next video, we're hopefully gonna finalize the studio and I'm gonna make a full studio tour. And then we will talk about the new synthesizer I just bought. So see you next week, enjoy the trip.